Welcome to PHI 102. Arguments and Critical Thinking. Study Session 1. Basic Concepts in Arguments and Critical Thinking. Introduction. In this opening study session, we shall be looking at the basic concepts in arguments and critical thinking, namely, logic, proposition, and arguments. This opening session is quite important because our understanding of these concepts will aid our grasping mental in subsequent study sessions. We shall also be looking at how to analyze arguments, premise indicators, and conclusion indicators. Learning outcomes. When you have studied this session, you should be able to Define and use correctly the following terms, logic, proposition, and arguments. And also distinguish between simple and compound propositions. Logic. The word logic can be used in different ways. It can be used to describe the totality of all laws guiding the human thoughts, since we are rational beings whose thinking processes are based on certain principles. In a strict sense, technical and professional sense, however, logic is that branch of philosophy that deals with the study of the basic principles, techniques, or methods for evaluating arguments. Author 2012, page 3. This definition shows that logic as a branch of philosophy attempts mainly to distinguish between good and bad arguments. It also can be defined as the study of the methods and principles used to distinguish correct from incorrect reasoning. Copy et al., 2006, page 1. Thus, basically, logic is a study of the nature and characteristics of good reasoning and the differences between good, that is correct, and bad, incorrect. Reasoning. Thomas, 1997, page 1. Propositions. A proposition can be used to refer to the content of a meaningful declarative sentence or the pattern of symbols, marks, or sounds that make up a meaningful declarative sentence. It asserts that something is or is not the case. Any proposition may be affirmed or denied. Copy et al., 2006, page 2. A proposition has the quality or property of being true or false, implying that every proposition must be either true or false. This is why a proposition is sometimes referred to as truth bearers. Truth and falsity, therefore, apply always to propositions. Copy et al., distinguish between propositions and sentences. They point out that sentences are the means by which propositions are asserted. In other words, two different sentences, consisting of different words differently arranged, may have the same meaning and be used to assert the same proposition. For example, the following are two different sentences that make the same assertion. Good luck, Jonathan, won the 2011 presidential election in Nigeria. And the 2011 presidential election was won by Goodluck Jonathan. We must add here that the terms proposition and statement have been used interchangeably by some logicians. Therefore, the term statement, though not an exact synonym of proposition, is used in logic in much the same sense. Some logicians prefer statement to propositions, although the latter has been more common in the history of logic. Copy et al., 2006, page 2. There are simple as well as compound propositions. A simple proposition makes only one assertion, while a compound proposition contains two or more simple propositions. In other words, you assert more than one proposition in a compound proposition. For example, the largest country in the world is the third most populous country in the world. 
The man who won the 2011 presidential election is the president of Nigeria. By the 1830s, the white men were the dominant race in the Hunter Valley. Most of the prime land along the main river frontages had been taken up for crops and cattle and settlers were moving into the back country north and west of the Hunter. After 1830, most resistance by the Coris was passive, although there was parodic outbreaks of violence. Nevertheless, the two races could not live completely apart and growing contact was inevitable. Copy at all, 2006. Fifthly, turning local government areas to development areas will maximize growth. We say this because turning local government areas into development areas will depoliticize development as suspicions of neglect due to fear of ethnic domination in various states will diminish and support for the party at the helm of affairs at the state capital or center will also cease to be the basis for the provision of amenities in local government areas. Cited from the African Guardian. From the above, examples 1 and 2 are simple propositions, Why 3 and 4 are examples of compound propositions. Arguments According to Kopi et al., 2006, page 4, propositions are the building blocks of which arguments are made. When we reach or affirm one proposition on the basis of other propositions, we say that an inference has been drawn. Inference is a process that may tie a cluster of propositions together. Some inferences are warranted or correct, others are not. To determine whether an inference is correct, the logician examines the propositions with which the process begins and ends, and the relations between those propositions. This cluster of propositions constitutes an argument. Arguments are the chief concern to logic. The term argument can have a dual meaning. In ordinary discourse, it connotes a quarrel or disagreement. Whereas in logic, that is in the technical sense, an argument is a sequence of statements, declarative sentences, or propositions in which one part known as a conclusion is claimed to follow from the others called the premises. In clear terms, therefore, an argument is any group of propositions of which one is claimed to follow from the others, which are regarded as providing support or grounds for the truth of that one. That means that an argument is not just a mere collection of statements. An argument has a structure which is defined by the terms premises and conclusion and the nature of the relationship between them. The conclusion of an argument is that proposition which is affirmed on the basis of some other propositions which serve as justification for the acceptance of the conclusion. These other propositions which go by various names such as evidence, grounds, or reasons, are more professionally called premises. In an argument, therefore, the premises are intended to provide sufficient grounds for the acceptance of the conclusion. For an argument to be present, there must be some structure within the cluster of propositions, a structure that captures or exhibits some inference. This structure would describe using the terms premise and conclusion. Thus, the premise is a proposition used in an argument to support some other proposition, while the conclusion is a proposition in an argument that the other proposition, that is the premises, supports, where there is no relationship whatsoever between the portative claim or conclusion and the reasons given for its acceptance then, there is no argument. An argument may have two sentences, where the first sentence serves as the basis for accepting the other, which is the conclusion. In other words, the premise and the conclusion may be stated separately, each in a separate sentence. For example, Dante Drum has not been convicted of the crime of murder. Therefore, any statement indicting him of the murder 
should be jettisoned as mere insinuation. Secondly, Okoracha is a politician who has recorded great success at the state level. Therefore, he will win the presidential election in 2015. Sometimes, both the premise and the conclusion may be stated in the same sentence. For example, since it turns out that all humans are descended from a small number of African ancestors in our recent evolutionary past, believing in profound differences between the races is as ridiculous as believing in a flat earth. Copy et al. 2006, page 4. The second example. Since it was clear that Daryl was not in London when her husband died, it would be wrong to bring her to court for questioning. The third example, large numbers of people in this country have never had to deal with the criminal justice system. Thus, they are unaware of how it works and of the extraordinary detrimental impact it has upon many people's lives. Human brains have the same kind of chemistry and cell receptors as rats regarding glucocorticoids. So, it seems possible that our response to being handled as infants is similar. In an argument with two separate sentences, one the premise and the other the conclusion, the statement of the conclusion may be stated first before the statement of its premise. For example, smoking in public places should be banned immediately. After all, passive smoking can cause cancer in non-smokers. Copy et al. 2006, page 5. Second example is that corrupt politicians should be banned from holding public offices. After all, statistics have shown that corrupt politicians who hold public offices are responsible for economic problems. It is also the case that even when premise and conclusion are united in one sentence, the conclusion of an argument may be stated first before a single premise is. Let's take, for example, a statement made by Malcolm X in 1965. You can't separate peace from freedom because no one can be at peace unless he has freedom. The above examples of simple arguments remind us that in some arguments, the premises of the argument are stated first and the conclusion last. In some others, the conclusion is either stated first or a sandwich in between, different premises offered in its support. Just as we drew a distinction between simple and compound propositions, it must be stated that most arguments are more complicated than the ones we used as examples. In other words, some arguments contain compound propositions with their several components related intricately. Copy et al. 2006, page 5. This means that we have cases where an argument has two or more propositions or premises supporting a proposition that is the conclusion. We are warned, however, that some compound propositions may resemble arguments to determine whether a group of propositions or statements is an argument or not. Therefore, we should ensure that 1. An inference is drawn and 2. A conclusion should be claimed to be true. For example, it is likely that life evolved on countless other planets than scientists now believe exist in our galaxy because life very probably evolved on Mars during an early period in its history when it had an atmosphere and climate similar to Earth, cited in Copy et al. 2006. In the above arguments, an inference is drawn and a conclusion is claimed to be true. The proposition, life very probably evolved on Mars during an early period in its history, is asserted as a premise and the proposition, life likely evolved on countless other planets, is here claimed to follow from that premise and to be true. Recognizing Arguments Earlier, we have shown with examples the following. 
that an argument may have two sentences, where the first sentence serves as the basis for accepting the other, which is the conclusion. In other words, the premise and the conclusion may be stated separately, each in a separate sentence. Secondly, sometimes both the premise and the conclusion may be stated in the same sentence. Thirdly, in an argument with two separate sentences, that is one for the premise and the other the conclusion, the statement of the conclusion may be stated first before the statement of its premise. Fourthly, it is also the case that even when premise and conclusion are united in one sentence, the conclusion of an argument may be stated first before its single premise. The inference from these is that in some arguments, the premises of an argument are stated first and the conclusion last. In some others, the conclusion is either stated first or is sandwiched in between different premises, offered in its support. In order to arrange such arguments into their premises and conclusion, there are words or phrases that typically serve to introduce the premises and the conclusion of an argument. Or four, 2012, page 15. The words and phrases are referred to variously as conclusion indicators and premise indicators. The following is a list of some conclusion indicators. Therefore, for these reasons. Hence, it follows that. So, I conclude that. Accordingly, which shows that. In consequence, which means that. Consequently, which entails that. Proves that. Which implies that. As a result, which allows us to infer that. For this reason, which points to the conclusion that. Thus, we may infer. The following is a list of premise indicators. Since as indicated by, because, the reason is that, for, for the reason that, as, may be inferred from, follows from, may be derived from, as shown by, may be deduced from, inasmuch as, in view of the fact that, now, let us rely on these indicators to identify the premises and conclusions in the following arguments. 1. What science can't know, mankind can't know. Therefore, all knowledge comes from science. 2. Abortion is evil, not only to the victim, but also to our sense of justice. Hence, it should be abolished. And lastly, Inasmuch as man is created first, man should be the master of all creatures. Or 4.2012, page 16. In 1 and 2, the indicators therefore and hence help to identify the conclusions which affirm that all knowledge comes from science and that abortion should be abolished respectively. In 3, the indicator inasmuch as helps us to identify the premise which gives support to the claim conclusion that man should be the master of all creatures. It must be stated, however, that the words and phrases listed above may help us to recognize the presence of an argument or identify its premises or conclusion. But such indicators do not necessarily appear. Sometimes, it is just the meaning of the passage or its setting that indicates the presence of an argument. Copy et al. 2006, page 28. Thus, if an argument does not have premise or conclusion indicators, we are required to identify the claim the person presenting the argument is trying to make. This is the conclusion of the argument. While the reasons given in support of such a claim are the premises of the arguments of 2012, 
page 17. Study Session Summary In this study session, we looked at the basic concepts that are most central to this course. Arguments and critical thinking, such as logic, propositions, and arguments. We defined logic as a study of the methods and principles used to distinguish correct from incorrect reasoning. We gave an account of propositions and distinguished them from the sentences in which they may be expressed. We also gave an account of the concept of an argument and defined an argument as a cluster of propositions of which one is the conclusion and the others are premises offered in its support. Finally, we looked at ways of recognizing arguments through phrases and words. We call conclusion indicators and premise indicators. End of study session one. Thank you for listening. <laughs>